Everything reminds you of them. Every song, every memory. The whole world seems to be conspiring to keep this person forever in your heart and mind. How cruel. How will you ever get past them? And to be frank, a part of you doesn't really want to get over them. You've grown accustomed to the pain, the final semblance of attachment you feel towards your former beloved. But you eventually see it, in the faces and words of friends, in the half-eaten takeout from yesterday, that maybe it's time to move on. But how? I think we should look towards the teachings of Krishnamurti, a renowned philosopher and spiritual teacher, in order to better understand the nature of love and how learning about detachment can help us get over heartbreak. Most of us realize, when we dare look at it, that we are terribly lonely, isolated human beings. Whether we are consciously or unconsciously aware of it, we want to escape from it, because we do not know what lies behind and beyond it. Being frightened, we run away from it through attachment. Like the Buddha, Krishnamurti emphasized the role of attachment in suffering. Attachment gives us a sense of security. Because we feel like we possess something or someone, we feel like we are then safe from uncertainty. But he's skeptical of the extent to which we are ever actually possessing an object of our desire. Rarely do we truly observe things as they are, let alone possess things as we think we have. Instead, we form images of our lovers and friends, with specific expectations and illusions of them that may not be true. Looking back at a relationship, we may only see the happy moments, but how often were we truly present throughout it? We cling to images of things that reaffirm who we are, such as relationships. We seek continuity through the continuation of these bundles of certainty. But for Krishnamurti, this is simply living in fear. We do this in fear of uncertainty, of what is beyond, and we can end up attached fully to something that is no longer there, such as memories. As he argues, much of our issue in letting go comes from the strength of memories. And you are afraid to let these memories go. However pleasant or unpleasant they may be, what are memories? They have no substance whatsoever. So you are frightened of letting go of something which has no value at all, memory being that which has continuity, the bundle of memories, a unit, a center. From this, Krishnamurti emphasizes the importance of detachment, not in the sense of indifference or apathy, but as a state of inner freedom. Attachment emerges through fear of uncertainty and creates certain psychological dependencies and expectations. These dependencies then lead to suffering when they are unmet. And believe me, most of them will eventually fail you. Change is a constant reality. Krishnamurti argues that through cultivating a mindset of non-attachment or detachment, we can free ourselves from the grip of emotional entanglements and find peace within ourselves, regardless of the changes outside of us. To do this requires cultivating the art of seeing that allows for greater awareness. When Krishnamurti speaks of awareness, he does not mean self-awareness, but rather a sort of general awareness of the self and its relation to the world. Modern relationships can become an endless therapy-like over analysis of what is wrong with you specifically. He believes that this self-analysis can lead to depression. Instead, he asks of us to simply see things as they are with no judgment or expectation. Look at the tree, the bird, your partner, yourself. Look at these things like it's the first time. Doing this disrupts our expectancies and beliefs we hold rigidly. In the context of getting over someone, this sort of awareness can involve examining the nature of our attachment to the person in a non-judgmental manner, uncovering underlying patterns of dependency or insecurity and recognizing the transient nature of relationships in general. Most of them will end, and even if you live to old age, one or both of you will eventually perish. It is through this honest form of self-reflection where Krishnamurti believes we can gain freedom through non-attachment. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey everyone, let's talk about learning. 
While I wouldn't say I'm bad at it, I always struggled with certain subjects, like math. I just found it really boring. But that's where Brilliant comes in. Brilliant isn't just your average online learning platform. It's a dynamic tool that makes learning engaging and effective. But here's what I love the most. Brilliant helps you develop a habit of lifelong learning. With its interactive courses and daily challenges, you'll find yourself eager to learn something new every day. And in today's rapidly changing world, being a lifelong learner isn't just valuable, it's essential. I've been really enjoying Brilliant's course on vectors, which empower your problem-solving toolkit with the core principles of vector mathematics, a fundamental concept for describing motion and orientation in space. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, head on over to brilliant.org slash sisyphus55 or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. But without possessiveness and attachment, where is love? Krishnamurti offered a radical redefinition of love beyond the confines of seeing somebody as your everything. For Krishnamurti, love is a state of being, rather than a feeling directed towards a particular person. It is everywhere and can be cultivated through awareness. True love, in his view, is unconditional, inclusive, and free from the constraints of ego and expectation. In other words, it is the absence of fear and attachment. It is accepting things as they are, with no anxiety over its continuation. In terms of getting over someone, it is simply the appreciation that a particular love was reserved for a particular person and that this specific dynamic has now ended. But it does not mean that love itself is no longer possible. In applying Krishnamurti's teachings to the process of getting over someone, here are some practical methods in terms of letting go. Cultivate mindfulness. By staying present with your thoughts and emotions, you can observe them and detach from them to a certain extent. This helps to develop greater emotional resilience. Practice self-care. You can engage in activities that will nourish your body and mind, including exercise, meditation, or spending time in nature or with friends. Cultivate gratitude. By focusing on the opportunities and gifts you have in life, you spend less time ruminating over the things that you have lost. Seek support. Don't be afraid to lean on friends, family, or even mental health help in order to navigate this healing process. Embrace impermanence. Recognize the reality that situations like this are an inevitability in life. Relationships, possessions, even your own sense of identity, are all subject to change and alter with the natural rhythms of existence. Perhaps one of the best teachings one can take from Krishnamurti is this idea that he is simply okay with whatever will happen next. His level of detachment that accepts each moment as it comes is necessary in navigating the turmoil of a heartbreak. While we may never reach his level of contentment, his words are definitely relevant for anyone struggling with the art of detachment. <laughs>